and welcome back to Real World Magic, where we make your life more magical. My name's Neil, I'm going to be your magical host, and in today's video I'm going to be drawing this banshee. It's a poster that I drew using my iPad Pro and my Apple Pencil that my wife and my mum bought me for my 40th birthday last year. Almost a year ago, not quite. And I'm going to show you how I drew this thing using a time-lapse photography thing that I did on my iPad. So if you want to watch that, it's coming up right after this. Okay, so let's get started. And I'll try and do this in real time, if I can. Okay, so let's do this fairly quickly. Now I started out drawing the basic face shape and I rescaled it as well because it came pretty obvious fairly quickly that I'd need a bit more space. I wanted to do some really wild hair, like the lockdown haircut that I've got at the moment, so sorry about that. And I kind of wanted the hair blowing in the wind. I also wanted to make sure that the face itself was pretty clear, and so I thought, well, the best way of doing that is to throw up quite a lot of, not ink, but colour, and make it all kind of dark, so that I could see what I'm doing with this thing. So I threw up loads of dark brown, I guess. I also wanted the texture of the skin to be a bit like wood. So I threw up quite a lot of uh, dark colour initially, shaded it as much as I could, and then I started adding white highlights. So there are really only three tools in this. There's the uh, pencil tool that I started out with, and I varied the brush sizes on that and the pressure. I also shrank the neck just there, um, and I wanted to smudge it to sort of get the cover, uh, the colour coverage good enough, and I, then I highlighted it using the eraser as well. So right now I'm just defining a bit more of the clumpiness of the hair, so I wanted to make sure that this was all about really a study in texture, because I wanted those groove lines in the skin to define the stretchiness, because ultimately a banshee is going to be screaming a lot. Um, so just there you can see quite a lot of uh, dark going onto the forehead and then um, colour going into the hair. So I almost wanted to define where the hair was as opposed to the forehead and I thought that would work quite nicely. Now you can see here a bit of hair coming down over the forehead as well so it's almost Kurt Cobain like with the centre parting. I didn't want to do too much of that but I did want a bit of a wispy sort of almost thrown about by the air kind of look about it. Now the hair clearly is taking an awful lot of time but there was a lot of shading in there and a lot of detail and if you really zoom in on that picture you'll see a lot of stuff there. I've also defined the collar the collar area, collar bone, the dress part of um, of the banshee, and at the at the same time, you're kind of going to notice a bit later on. Um, I erase a lot of that because I wanted it almost to be a cloak with a bit of a cape, and as you'll see in a second, that's not really how it ended out. This sort of thing, as you're drawing it, I always find that it kind of evolves. It's almost like writing a book, in as much as it's a story being told of what this thing is and what it's going to look like. So I wanted to make sure that this kind of has a bit of a backstory and the cape just didn't really seem to make sense. So again, I'm kind of doing clumpiness. I'm trying to make sure that it looks like it's actually attached to the head. Um, and yeah, because there is so much hair, it's, it's kind of like a Bonnie Tyler thing, but without too much of an afro look, it kind of looks wispy, and that's really what I was going for. I was also trying to aim for a bit of a two-tone effect on the hair as well, almost like what I've got at the moment, because I did dye my hair to try and stop it from being quite so white. Um, now I've got white roots, which just proves to me that I'm old. Um, right now I'm highlighting the sort of high points on the head, and again shrink it down because I'm going to need a bit more space for the uh, body and for the boobage which I've just drawn. Uh, I've then sketched out the arms and as I said I've just erased this collar area and the reason being is I kind of wanted a bit of a sort of cleavage kind of thing but also to show some ribs to make it look like this is almost a skeleton that's draped in raggedy cloth. Uh, the cloth itself I found really satisfying to draw actually because as you lay it down you almost borrow ink I know it's not ink, it's digital, I get that, but borrow colour from one place to another. 
and then almost use your finger just to smudge it. Now here, as you can see, it's almost like there's a Superman kind of look uh, to the Banshee itself, and that's that cape that sort of, I wanted it to sort of flow behind and make it look like it was tossed by the wind. Yeah, that didn't really work, so as you'll see in a second, I start to colour it in, it just doesn't work at all. Right now I'm just shading underneath the uh, breasts, and I'm also trying to add a bit of texture to that dress area as well. Um, I was quite happy with the way that the rags almost looked like they were just torn at the bottom there, and there's one particular uh, tendril, I suppose, or tentacle kind of thing, uh, that curls in a really satisfying way, and you'll see that in just a second. So what I'm doing now is just adding some colour. There's that little tendril just being added there. The hands took me an inordinate amount of time, um, and it, they often do, because I want to make them look realistic. There's the Superman cape that just was horrible, so I deleted it. It didn't last a particularly long time. I just thought, nah, don't like it. Um, but this is the thing about drawing. You kind of add it, and then you take it away. Um, and you just see what works. In a second as well, you'll see that her right hand um, does get a little bit bigger, and that's because I was comparing it to the other hand, I was comparing it to the face, and I was just looking at it thinking, that doesn't really work very well. Um, and this is just the way that things work sometimes. So there we have it, that is my Banshee. I hope you enjoyed it. I'll show you in a second the full finalized um, poster and it's also got some words on there as well so there we are this is my poster hope you like it okay now if you want to buy that poster you can head on over to my Etsy store the link is down in the description thanks ever so much for watching if you did enjoy this video please do click the like button subscribe ding that bell button to be notified of future uploads also comment down below because that sort of thing really helps and if you really enjoy this channel you can even join now for £1.99 per month that's what it starts at and then you can start joining in on my live streams with special emotion emotions <laughs> And then you can start joining in on my live stream with special emoticons and buttons and all of that jazz. So if you did enjoy it, please do consider doing that. I'll be back next time with some more magical awesomeness, but until next time, as always... Yes. Yes. Magical. Please subscribe to Real World Magic. While you're there, click the bell button to be notified of future uploads, and have a look at all of my social stuff. Remember to donate on Patreon if you really, really liked it, and I'll see you again next week.